He said that um that people will message you and they think that you're being rude and he's like, No no, he's not being rude, he's just literally the most forgetful person in the world. <laughs> yeah. And that literally um we was coming out of work today and you know, I work in the P department, so everyone's on the thing putting the football bets on. I thought, Oh, it's gonna be great, I watched football but tonight coming in and we did our fancy teams and then you mentioned I'm like, Oh crap, yeah, I forgot we had that <laughs> <laughs> Right. So I would have been sat there watching it, you'd have been sat up with it all, like, uh, are, we, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You'd be like, oh, no, I've just got my beer and feet up. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Love Darts exclusive with the greatest YouTube darts player of all time. He is the prime time, 170 checkout king, Gary Anderson destroying, ex-wrestling, flaming chip pranking, world championship qualifying, professional dart playing, world number 58, it's Matthew Edgar, crowd goes wild, woo! Undertaker, Undertaker! There we go. Cheers, there. guys. I'm off. I can't. I can't top that. That was perfect. That is how you should do an intro. So anyone who's going to introduce me in future, John McDonald, if you're watching this, that is how you do an intro. After what is he? He's played in three world championships. He's played in ten UK Open. We don't want to hear that. No. That is how you do an intro. Just bang, bang, achievement, achievement. Which I was actually surprised when you're reeling it off because I didn't think I had that many. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, I had great fun. I could have kept going, but I thought, well, you know, we've done. Feel free, minutes, so. carry on. I'm loving it. I'll just sit here. Flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> oh, everywhere! Yeah, it, flattery is a good thing. Remember that in the comment section of my videos, guys. <laughs> Seriously, though, thank you, thank you for taking time out of your busy, uh, busy schedule to chat to us today. Now, I know you're a busy, busy boy, so. I've been trying to lock down an interview with the prime time for months. In fact, uh, pre world championships, I was trying to get one in, but obviously lots of preparation. We did get uh, one with Ryan Sell and Aaron Beanie, uh, but you really are nonstop. Well, you went the second best and third best really, I suppose, didn't you? If you I know I had to build to something. Oh yeah. I'm uh, I am nonstop, but I like it that way. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that's got to be busy all the time. I, uh, I have to have so much short term goal to look forward to all the time, whether it's just something like, watching a game of football or Coronation Street on the telly or I need something short term to keep me going and then that's what I cling on to literally every day <laughs> so like we're filming this tonight there's football on tonight and I've just at the moment I'm working in the school uh, helping them out during the lockdown period because they're very short staffed and you know um, so I've gone back to my old job which is uh, PE teaching just for yeah, six great. weeks and then it's like when we're coming out of there it's like right oh, it's football tonight, and then tomorrow Villa's on, and there's just these little things like that I cling to. So, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I, I tend to find that I just fill every moment of every day. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've obviously interviewed your work colleagues, so to speak, in the new kid on the block with, uh, with the self-proclaimed greatest pub player of all time with Aaron Beanie, and the heavyweight power shooter and power scorer Ryan Searle. How's it been gelling with the Loxley boys? We, I mean, Ree and Ryan, I mean, the Loxley brand really came at a meeting in in Germany and it was me and Ryan that was at the table. Me and Ryan obviously share together when we travel now and we share the room and we, we share transport whenever we can. We sort of get on the same flights and it was sort of, we, we sort of knew each other very well beforehand. And in terms of the tour, everyone gets on so great. I mean, in terms of Aaron Beanie, I don't think anyone's ever got a bad word to say about him. Mm. He's so easy to get on with. And yeah, it, it's easy on that sense. So anyone who's coming in, they're, they're going to find it quite easy because we're all quite easygoing people and we, we don't mind a deal. I feel like, I mean, I've spoken to, uh, to Matt and Dom, obviously uh, from Loxley as well. And you all just seem like, the same family like you're all very very similar in terms of like you're so relaxed easily approachable easy to talk and uh and just up for a laugh so it's a great it's a great crowd you, you've read that perfect yeah that's pretty much it you know we're just very easygoing people okay Sarah, and if, if we can have a laugh along the way as well then brilliant and certainly if we can get a, a good wind up on the go as well we, do, we like a good wind up so yeah, now I've I've seen obviously um 
when I've spoken to to Ryan and and to Aaron, they've said that there's a, a group chat and it's raucous, um, but good fun. I think that as long as you're having fun in the workplace, which playing darts is work to you, how how cool is that? Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's the dream for all of us. And uh, and yeah, I, it's it's nice to see. I think the things we get to see a lot of your personality through, obviously Edgar TV, and having that insight behind the scenes is so interesting to all of us because obviously you know we, we're there watching watching the professional darts thinking i wonder what their life's like behind the scenes and that's that's edgar tv that's that's what we get to see we get to see hear feel your life as a dart player that's because i am that person that it would be sat the other side of the screen wanting to watch what i'm doing if mm. i wasn't doing it i am a massive darts fan have been my whole life and like I say, if, if I wasn't, if I didn't get to the stage where I could do it myself, I'd love to watch and I'd love to do that and watch the program. And watch. That's why I'm always able to come up with content because I'm like, what would I like to see? What does the fan in me want to see? Yeah. And that, that's all it is. I'm just a fan living his dream, doing what he wanted to do. If I weren't involved as a player, I'd be involved somewhere else. I'd either be a referee or I, I'd be something. I'd be involved in the game somehow. I, I just managed to get myself involved as a player so happy days win-win yes exactly it's uh i can't complain i can't complain <laughs> like i say it's busy but it's exactly how i want it so now when i spoke to the other guys they each said that they were the better in practice are you going to say that you were the best in practice when the three of you all get together oh who's the better in practice out the three of us good question I, I wouldn't say I am because on the practice board, when we get into a group situation, I can mess around a bit or banter with the other boards a little bit. And I think sometimes that takes away from the the full on like, oh, I'm going to be the best player on this board. But I do have this competitive edge like we play some finishing games. And if Ryan goes and takes out a finish... I want to take out the next one. And mm. I, I had this as well at the World Championships with uh, Danny Baggish. So we practiced together at the World Championships and was doing a, a finishing game. And then he took out like a 147 and then I took out a 148. And I was like, God, and I gave it some because I wanted to take one out straight. And he did. And then he mm. went treble 20, treble 19 and then missed the double 16. And he was gutted because he wanted to reply by hitting one back. Yeah. So we, we do get that uh, like little one-upsmanship. But I think if I had to honestly say who got the better of it, I'd have to go with me. <laughs> I thought there was going to be that moment of, do you know what? <laughs> He's such a nice guy. He's given to someone else being honest. No, no, no. It's me. <laughs> Each one of you is me. <laughs> Just built it up to that moment. <laughs> it did. It did. It built up really well. Um Look, I, th I think there's lots more to come from you. I mean, last year was a really good year, obviously ups and downs. I mean, have you got any targets for the next months, next year? Are, are you looking at each day as it sort of comes? I know obviously the COVID situation doesn't help things, but ha you must have some kind of plan and achievements. I know you're very goal orientated, set your goals and, uh, and a big advocate for doing that. I'm very much on the journey. So my destination is the top 32. That's where I want to get to. And I sort of realized at one point that I was pushing the goal more than I was enjoying the journey. And when that happens, you don't enjoy being 5-5 five five because you want the result. You don't enjoy being in a good game of darts because you want the outcome. Mm -hmm. And I, de I decided to take a step back from that and to enjoy the journey and to try and improve me pushing me forward rather than trying to pull it to me like i mm. want the top 32 it's coming to me i yeah, went yeah. this is me i need to staircase myself up to the top 32 so i'm on that journey how far up that journey i get this year like you said we cannot plan for covid today we've just had the uk open announced which is the first event of the year by the looks of it which madness but you know we could only have maybe four events this year in terms of those five day pro tour events if you look at the gaps between them i haven't played since the world championships and we're in a covid situation at the moment so it's not even like i can go meet up with kevin and have a proper practice together and it there's gonna be a lot of people going in cold into events and the germany one we did 
the autumn series, I think it was. And we went over there and a lot of people said they felt rusty in the early bits. And you look at the stats and the stats sort of suggest exactly the same. They got better as the week went on. Mm. I think there's going to be a lot of rustiness. So where there's rustiness, there's weakness. And where there's weakness, there's a chance to exploit that. So I've got to try and get myself ready to try and exploit that. How well I can exploit that and what I can do with that, we'll, we'll see as the year goes on. But I've certainly improved. Practice is going at, I keep looking at my board as if like as if it's going to make any difference. Um, <laughs> practice is going fantastic. I'm putting in some good work on the board. And yeah, I, I think I'm going to keep moving in the right direction, definitely. I'm up to a career high at the moment. And I think yeah, there's I mean, more to 50, go. Like, 58th you know. in the table. I mean, you know, that's that's huge. 57. Right now, that's 57. a huge achievement. And I mean, I bet that was a welcome one. I mean, especially after your potential scare that you were going to lose your tour card. It went from sort of... You know, um, I was talking to to Zach Thornton and uh, a few other a few other YouTubers, and we're sat there, we're watching on the connect. We were like, "Come on, come on, God, he's done it, he's done it." We've all gone nuts. <laughs> I mean, we really followed that journey with you. We were gutted when we first heard about it. that. Was that must have been huge for you? I think if you ask whoever you ask about the tour card situation, anyone who asked me would tell you I was never once in doubt of that tour card, even going into the World Championship qualifier. Even on the day the people I spoke to there, everyone will tell you I was assured. I, I was in control of it. it. It's when you're not in control of that and you're not assured, that's when you that's when problems arise. And I never once for one second thought I wasn't going to get that card. And like I say, when you when you're reading out the world ranking and that, it's it's so easy when you sit back and go, oh well, you're only in the fifties or whatever. But then when you take into context, like I was having a practice yesterday and the missus was on the sofa, and I was just like I'm the 57th best player in the world. The world's a big place. You know, it's it's not like a little small, small area. The world's quite a large, a large place. Yeah. And I was like, it, it sometimes doesn't sink in, you know, just what an achievement that is in itself. I mean, getting a tour card's an achievement in itself. Yeah. But then to be, and to be now in my fourth season with this card means I've been in the, the top half of the elite part of the game for four years now and and i'm only getting better you know yeah. so that's uh it's exciting isn't it it's exciting. like you say it's, it's good because we can follow that journey we can all uh hopefully i can share a lot of that and people can get involved with and sort of see what it's like going up the rankings as well yeah, I mean, for those who don't know, um, and you know, you might be new to darts, you might just be clicking for the first time, you might have seen a few bits uh, on YouTube, but um, Matt Matt has a channel called Edgar TV, which he's he's very honest about his journey, about darts behind the scenes. He gives you complete insight. He'll give you stats and figures. It's a really, really good channel. If you haven't subscribed already, I'll put it in the description. Click on there, subscribe to the channel. Great, great content, and. It's all part of, you know, it fits in nicely. Everything works well towards the brand of, of, of Loxley, of your um, facade. You know, I know that you've done your wrestling. I'll get onto that uh, shortly. But, um, you know, if we go back a little bit talking about sort of you, you, and, you and the guys, I hear rumours that, well about the band, you know, about the band with the Loxy lads. And I, I really do hope when the COVID situation resolves, we may see, you know, some promo stuff with you guys together and give guys some more insight. Um, but I was told by both of your colleagues that once you did a fart that cleared three Ockies. Yeah. Discuss. It could have been more as well. It could have been more because we was on the end board. So we was on the end board and it cleared two down. So I reckon if we was maybe further in, because it was a row of eight and we was on board eight and it moved seven and six. If we was on maybe six, I reckon I could have done more. That is exactly what they said. If he had been in the middle, yeah. we would have been in real... <laughs> So who did you clear? Did you, did you clear any high profile players as well? I honestly can't remember who it was, but I remember doing it and Aaron suggesting I needed to go to the doctor. And then when we looked across, literally people just went and grabbed the drinks and you went, you've just cleared two boards. You've cleared two. And it was just, it was one of those bits where the more people got disgusted by it, the more funnier it got. And yeah, I mean, 
I, 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 I once got the detention. Front. I once got detention purely on the basis that I was laughing at someone who farted in assembly. Farts are funny, you know. <laughs> I'm now what 34, and I've not grown out of it yet. And <laughs> it's when you're teaching as well, and someone does it, and all the children are laughing, and you're like trying not to to go with them, sort of thing, you know. Yeah, but are you the teacher I'm, who goes? Yeah, that's pretty funny. Or either teach. No, don't laugh now. Come on, I'm secretly drawing. Oh, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Um, there was once we was doing a, a football lesson outside. <laughs> I'm thinking about it already. I've got two great stories. Um, one of them, the, the lad's back pedaling balls coming in his back pedal, he fell over, landed in a big dirty puddle, and oh, I, I was gone. I was gone, and. Um, there were some of them like trying to like you know like sympathise with oh it's not funny it's not funny and they're like oh Mr Edgar thinks it is and I'm like ah! <laughs> I was creased over and then another one was on my first ever assignment so my first ever placement was in a secondary school and it was so hard it was like a normal comprehensive school it was quite hard to get the children to the students to to do things and we had a year nine session and. It was a, a girl's year nine. Um, I can't remember what they called it. I think like courage session or something where it was the ones that don't really like sport, but we just do little activities to try and get them active. And they were doing long jump. And there's this one girl sat there plastering her face in makeup. And I've talked her into having a guy when she runs and she jumps. And before she's done it, I've said, don't lean backwards because we measure from the point so you've got to lean forwards so she does it she jumps as she jumps she flattens out in the air lands face she got up she looked like a swamp monster she was covered in sand everywhere i laughed so much <laughs> I <can't... laughs> and the thing is i see her now like if i because i live in the town that i was working in if i like go to tesco's and that sometimes i see her and I laugh now, and she's like, "Are you still laughing about that?" You know, it's like, <laughs> always. She's in the twenties now, you know, and I still find it funny. So, <laughs> brilliant. Did you uh, did you so, celebrate guess, before brilliant. shaking your opponent's hand after doing that far? <laughs> because I know they're quite big, and I do respect that as well. Is the I, I remember seeing something that you said that your father brought you up to be respectful of your opponents. So you'll shake the hands, then you'll give it the big one. But I mean, sometimes surely you must really struggle if it's been a really, really important game to think, oh, oh no, I remember I'm going to be respectful and then go for it. Yeah, it, it's tough, um, especially that world championship one. I just wanted to explode and uh, you know, it was my first win on the Alexandra Palace stage. Yeah. There's been many times as well, like when things have come up, but it's just really, it's just nature now. That's the first thing you do. And I think um, it got drilled into me from a young age, but I think I was about 16 or 17. And I just won like this. I won my county qualifier and then like the nationals to go through to the world well, masters. And after that, I gave it some and my dad when I came off, he was stood there with his arms folded and he weren't like, well done. He's like, I'm disappointed. And I'm like, what are you disappointed with? You know, I played well sort of thing. He's like, your opponent stood there waiting to shake your hand. He wants to go off stage. He's just lost. And you're running around the stage. He goes, shake his hand. Then you can run around the stage and do what you want. And yeah, ever since that day, I've always, uh, I've always done that, you know, because there's like a respect thing and you know there's even like with my own style like when i bring up my own children or when i'm teaching there's, there's two ways you can do it you can you can discipline out of respect or you can discipline out of fear yeah, yeah. and that yeah. was completely out of respect you know the fear is don't do that or you'll get a detention where doing out of respect is could could you do it this way and then yeah okay i'll do it that way then I really and, liked. I mean, when I when I saw it, I was like, "Yeah." I mean, that's 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 the kind of guy I try to be. I know that um, in football, for example, I you know used to play football when I was younger, and if I tackle someone really badly, I'll go over, make sure they're okay, and help them up. You see, the modern footballer, they'll walk away, and I'm like, you know, you've done bad, and it, it frustrates me so much. So to see some proper sportsmanship in this game, I was like, "Yeah, good on you, Matt. Good on you." I've got to admit that I'm awful on a football pitch. <laughs> I'm a cop of a proper wind up. I'll, uh, I'm always talking. I'm always jabbing at someone. I've been the guy who's pulled the 
striker shorts down on the corner. You know, I've uh, <laughs> well, that's just I'm the terrible. mysterious streak in you, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's only darts I get that sort of like really, yeah, terrible. So what you're saying is you're actually terrible in real life. It's just darts you show the respect. <laughs> yeah, because that's where it was drilled into me from. Yeah. <laughs> he, he needed Dad to stand behind me a lot more. Yeah, that didn't say anything about non-darts related stuff. It's just yeah, exactly. <laughs> now oh, I'm never, I'm never quiet. <laughs> uh, I'd like to move on. You, you have a very special relationship with one of the Loxley designers, a young Zach Thornton, who helped design. Um, your most recent darts, and which I must add, I actually have them right here. I have checked out Maybe myself two 170 checkouts, which I've never done before. These darts are made for 170 checkouts. They're absolutely fantastic darts. If you haven't, go onto the Loxley website, give them a checkout. Fantastic dart. I nearly, in fact, hit a 170 while I was streaming. I, I specifically to changed to them. I went, Do you know what? I've got 170, I'm going to pick up the Edgars. Everyone's like, yeah, whatever, you've been playing rubbish all night. First one goes in, my face goes. Next one goes in. What happens then? I can feel, I can feel this is not good. <laughs> the blood rushing to the head. Yeah. It's like when you, um, I, I, my, the closest I've ever come to uh, to a nine dart, I did two 180s back to back. That next throw, a 26 guaranteed every time every pub player has been there after the 180 the 26 happens but um absolute machines the 170 machines you must be thrilled with them i'm really happy with them darts yeah um that was exactly what i wanted i just want i wanted a dart which was like my old one but with the tweaks that i could make you know to make them um yeah. personal and also that I could drop the weight down on them and thin the darts out. So it all worked out perfect. Yeah. So that's so nice. slim. Yeah. They I'm really happy with with the dart. They they turned out perfect. Took a bit of designing, like I say, with um thought and darts going backwards and forwards. Mm. But we got there in the end, you know. And like I say, um since then we've become quite like I say we've got quite a good uh, relationship with quite pally. Um, I've just found out today that his missus beat him on the computer. You know, he's a bit of a computer player as well. And his missus, just a, sweetest girl in the world, fighting game, knocked him out twice. So just on to throw it out there, be well. ashamed That's... of yourself. On his birthday, how mean of her. Exactly. <laughs> she should... He should be ashamed of himself, you know. He's a gamer, apparently, and he's just <laughs> lost to someone who's never picked up a control of him. Because it's his birthday, she goes, I'll sit down and have a game with you, and knocked him out twice. Should be ashamed of himself. I hope you keep this bit in. <laughs> I will keep this bit in. Zach, you've been told, ashamed. Embarrassing, Zach. Embarrassing. How <laughs> <I'll> embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually play with uh, with Zach on Call of Duty most nights, to be fair. We're probably up till about 2 o'clock in the morning to... Um... Yeah, that's not good, but there we go. That's another. Play with his missus, who's a better gamer, apparently. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, um, would you mind if your missus plays tonight? You know, if you only got one controller, let her play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's not gonna get this one let down. No, no. <laughs> this is just gonna be a roast Zach session. <laughs> no, no. I, I am a huge fan of Zach's work, and in fact, my new darts. I don't even have them here. My new darts have just arrived today, which I designed with him as well. Um, I put some pictures up on Instagram. Check them out. He's such such a great designer, lovely, lovely guy, and uh, I think I think Matt agrees. He's he's very very talented uh, individual. Yeah. Until you stick him in front of a dartboard, then yeah, then, you know, it's not yeah. as then it sort of goes. But if it can design them, he's great. He's fantastic. Great designing, just the throwing. You know, no, he has beaten me more yeah. recently. So I'm not we've all got our market, haven't we? We've all got our niche. <laughs> <laughs> now. I mean, it's, it is a really, really nice dart, your dart. And I think um, they were incredibly well received when they came out. And of course, they got a little bit cheekier recently. We have the undressed Edgars. Mm. I thought that was that was right up your street of being cheeky and uh, playing around as well. I was like, wouldn't surprise me if actually Matt went, oh, I wonder if we could call them like naked Edgars, undressed Edgars. It happened. I actually, uh, that that's true. I actually proposed naked Edgar. There you go. <laughs> my argument was... Who doesn't want a naked Edgar? You know, that's sort of like that's the dream for so many people. And what <laughs> what was that, 30, 40 pounds or something? You know, to some people, just to have the opportunity to say, I've got naked Edgars, you know, yeah. that, that's well, you could have that's put 18, you could have put 18 plus on. I mean, darts are for 18 plus, I think, typically, anyways. You could have got away with the 18 plus naked Edgars. 
Put them I mean, on have the you seen the, <laughs> I've seen the photo I did on the photo shoot. That would have been perfect on the front cover, you know, on the, on the actual box. So I was doing a photo shoot, and I like to clown around, as it might show. And I was doing the photo shoot, and I'm doing all the photos. We've got the green screen, and I'm doing all the photos. And then I was like, right, one more photo. And I just dropped my trousers for the, uh, the green screen shoot. And I'll, I'll send you it over so you can put it in somewhere. I think I've got it somewhere, actually. But no, if not, send it. And that, that is not me searching for it. I'm pretty sure that uh, someone sent me that for the banter. But it's not uncommon for us to see you in your boxer shorts in uh, in streams and videos. To be fair, I think I've seen a, a shuffle of boxer shorts dance when you uh, when you got your new uh, what they called the toothpaste shirt. I think they called it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did that one. There was um, because that's another. I did, I did that when I was round uh, Thornton's house, and his missus messaged him and says, "Why have I just gone on social media and seen Matt walking around our house in your boxer pack in his boxes? You know, what are you two up to right now? You know, like what's going on around there?" And it's this is what I talked about with your special relationship. <laughs> 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 just walking around with pants in his house but uh, th that's what it is you get like I said about being comfortable with people and having that sort of vibe and that, that you just get that with him you know you get that sort of comfortable vibe where you know what i've come around your house i'm just gonna take my trousers off yeah yeah i'm just gonna, have a, I'm just gonna have a walk about you know well there was there was another video where you were sat on the uh <clears throat> sat on the steps waiting for a delivery and then zach turns around and goes you have be waiting a long time you're at my house mate i was half expecting you in your boxes then to be fair but uh no i like i like the banter i like the the live streams that you do with him it's it's, it's all good fun and uh, and a great relationship we get to see uh developing there now yeah. i'm a bit gutted in all honesty that i missed out on the world championship shirt because i was a big uh hulk hogan fan and i thought it was just a great bit of fun for the world champs how did that come about Oh, honestly, right? And this might not surprise some people, especially if they're not big fans. Um, most of my ideas for Edgar TV or for my future or what I'm going to do next come in what I call my contemplation time, which is either sat on the toilet in the morning or in the shower. <laughs> they're the two they're the two moments where i'm really where i just have a bit of like i'm one of the people that i'll shower for 30 to 45 minutes because i just stand there soaking my head and just contemplating the world you know i put the whole world to rights in my shower and then the next day i get to do it again yeah also i i'm a morning man so i get there in the morning i just sit down and I, again i take a good 15 to 20 minutes and i just contemplate the day I've got to have a good think about the day, what's going to be happening. And in that time, I'll come out and I'll be like, right, I'm going to do this video. I'm going to do this. I've got this idea for that. And one day I just came out the toilet and I went, I think I need a Hulk Hogan themed shirt. So I passed it to Jody, the missus. I said, could you draw me something like this? And then I asked the Loxley guys, I says, can we get this done? And they went, Matt, you've got like 10 days to the world championship. I was like, well, that's what I want. And mm -hmm we managed to pull it off you know, that's the other thing i'm not i'm a bit last minute but i would have like, never guessed <laughs> <laughs> due to the fact that this was scheduled a couple of weeks back and it's meant to be happening in two hours but it's happening now because i accidentally yeah, a few months ago then a few weeks ago in a few hours <laughs> yeah 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 but um i think most women must think what an, uh, they probably go into the toilet expecting there to be a secret button and there to be like some, you know, blueprints and everything where these mad ideas come out. Because I'm exactly the same. You sit there and you contemplate and then you come out with mm. your great ideas. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. common. It is common. But uh, I thought it was a lovely <laughs> touch. Uh, I mean, let's let's segue into the, the wrestling, because many people um, have heard that you used to wrestle, but we didn't really know much about that. How, I mean, how did that start? How did it come about? Were you in the USA as a child? You went to school wrestling team and got bullied. You know, that's what that's what that's what we picture from wrestling. Uh, but how did it come about? Huge wrestling fan. So yep. I've watched wrestling since ever I can remember, you know, from falling asleep on the sofa watching SummerSlam 92. Like, I'm not tired, you know, like, what was I then? Like, six or something, five, six years old. Um, literally always watched it, always gone as much as I possibly can. I'm a walking encyclopedia of wrestling. And then I was like, you know what, I fancy I'm going to go at this. 
fancy a touch of this. So I went online, looked for some wrestling schools, started doing that. And then I was like, I quite like this. And then there was people doing shows that were going to the training camps and things. I was like, right, I need to go and get better. So I used to go down to Portsmouth to somewhere called the FWA Academy. And there's some great trainers there. Um, some guys have really gone on to big heights. Uh, people I've been on shows with, such as AJ Styles. Um, CM Punk was on uh, a show, which was his last one in the UK. Some really good talent that have been sort of enrolled. Um, one pack who's in AEW at the moment. He was my training partner when we was down in Portsmouth. He's quite for runs and things. And I just got really into it. And then I always was like, right, I want to go all the way. Because I'm one of those people that if I do summer, I want to, I don't just want to do it here. I want to go and be the best. And then what changed my mind at it was I lost that vision and I started enjoying just being local talent. Uh, I quite like just staying comfortable, you know, because anytime I went to like a bigger show or worked outside of that, I didn't have that same comfort and I didn't have that friendship circle. And I was like, I don't like it enough to be out here on my own doing it by myself. Mm. So when I realized that and I toned it back to local stuff, I was like, maybe I need to pick my darts back up again and maybe give the darts another go. And I sort of had that little crossover period and I got into the UK Open and then I was like, right, we'll see how the UK Open goes. And I got to the fourth round and I was like, right, I've got to go darts over wrestling now, especially because I believed that I could go further with the darts mm. and the wrestling I'd accepted where <clears> I was and I was happy being local talent. So what was it? I mean, that's obviously how you got there. But what was it like doing it? I mean, it must have given you that, you know, that showman performance element that want to sort of entertain people, right? Loved it. I loved every second. And I tell you what, I keep saying I'm going to do it again. The missus goes mad every time. So even a couple of years ago, like the year before the COVID, I was going training and the missus is like, are you daft? And then um, the Loxy guys got wind of it. And now, are you daft? You know, and it's like, have you, it, had, it, had it big, be... have you had any big injuries? No, never. I've never been injured once. Um, not from that. I mean, I broke my hand uh, doing MMA. I broke my hand getting ready for a match. And I actually then went and won a challenge tour with a broken hand. I So I was training that week and I was like, my hand's a bit sore. I went to play the challenge tour. I won a challenge tour event. And I was like, oh, my hand's throbbing. And I mean, my hand, my knuckles on this hand are about three times the size for that reason. And I went, right, I'm going to have to go to the doctors. And I went and they were like, you broke your hand. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah. like, go to an x-ray. And I had an x-ray done. I broke my hand. And I'm like, I just want a challenge tour. You know, <laughs> Imagine so if that's why was, was fine. <laughs> yeah, it's strange, isn't it? So I mean, if you look back at the stats, there's, I think it was like 2016 or something. I was like top reserve from the Q school order of merit. So I could have gone in everything. And I think I entered about two events because <clears throat> I had a broken hand. So, <laughs> Did you have any big acrobatic moves? Did you have a special power move or anything? No, I was, um, I think the best way I could describe myself, I, I like to model myself a bit on like a Bret Hart sort of character. But I think as I got a little bit, more into it i'd like to say more of an eddie guerrero in terms of <laughs> yeah. th there's nothing really big and flashy it was just a, a solid technical work rate and yeah i think that's why i managed to get through quite quite come to a, a modern day it'd probably be the miz you know he never gets injured because his <clears> style is <throat> so safe and i was i was safe if there was a good crowd in if we had let's say four or five hundred people who was going because sometimes you get a big crowd and they just sit there and watch it. Like, oh, yes, well done. Oh, lovely. And then there's other nights you get there and there's a group of lads that have come out for a night out and they're all tanked up and they're getting into it. And if, if that's going and you can feel that atmosphere, sometimes I would go to the second rope and maybe jump off it. But, <laughs> oh. but that's it. If there's a big buzz and a big vibe, you know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to be, be buzzing in there. And then <laughs> so in the right rope. at the top for you to go from the first to the second. No, the third is just out of the question. <laughs> there's a few times I went up to the third, but I never jumped off it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, they 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 pull injuries just by, like you say, like jumping off of of a, off a rope. It's it, it's quite, you know, there's a lot more to it, and uh, I could spend hours talking about it. I, I was a bigger uh, Undertaker and Bret Hitman Hart fan when I was a kid. 
you know, I think it was the pink wraparound sunglasses, which I actually had at one point. I don't know where they are now, but they're probably worth millions now. I've got some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but not quite an Undertaker urn. Oh, that was incredible. I was shaking. I was shaking at that. That was incredible. I've got that now. I've got the glasses you just mentioned there. Yep. I've, got a pair of, I've got so much wrestling memorabilia. Um, when you say about injuries as well, I just thought then there's actually this video on my channel if you haven't seen it yet. It's um, an injury that I was a part of, but it wasn't me that had it. So we was on the outside and we were brawling and the guys, it's a tag team ladder match for the titles. We're defending our tag team belts. Guy's gone up and he's gone to jump off the ladder, but the ladder has gone from this position because he set it up wrong and he's gone on the top. So it's gone from here and it's kicked out. So instead of holding, it's kicked out this way. So he's fell down. So he's fell from the top of the ladder to the outside of the ring on his head. So I've stepped in to try and help him out, to try and take some of the force. And he's kicked me in the head on the way down. So I'm on the floor like, uh, what's going on? You know, And he sits up and the back of his head was like a tennis ball. And it was just... Blood coming. Out. It's on my channel. You know, go check it out. No, I, it's I, 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 no I, ha I have seen it. And... Uh... I get sent so many crazy things like that, all the injuries and things. And I was like, Oh God, you know, and the fans, you know, they're thinking, Oh, this is all great part of the show. It's, it's yeah. sometimes, you know, you've got, uh, you know, I used to be an actor and the show must go on as such. So you're trying to sort of hide the fact that actually we've got a very situ very serious situation here, but it's supposed to happen. Everyone don't worry. <laughs> We're fine. <laughs> That's really one, actually. blood. <laughs> There was a, there was one where <laughs> we <laughs> was doing a dumpster match, which was brilliant, by the way. And there was this one bit where the backstage video that came out was we chucked one guy in a wheelie bin and he, he was going to be wheeled out. <laughs> now, the guy that was wheeling him out turned up late. So he didn't realise that we put a set of stairs in that night rather than the ramp. <laughs> to come out so he comes out and, he's duh, 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 and he hits the stairs <laughs> he hits the stairs and the wheelie bin comes down and he's upside down in his wheelie bin <laughs> falling down these stairs oh it's so funny i wish i had a video of that <laughs> oh you need to ask oh, some. this is great Let's bring see back all these stories yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a side of you that not many people, I think, you know, they they know it existed. But I'd love to spend more time going into it. But we are primarily talking darts, and and we've obviously got limited time anyway. But so, is it safe to assume that this brought you, you know, your playing to the crowd element to your game and led you to being the big character that we see on on, on screen and and behind behind your own screen with Ega TV? It led me to not be scared of a crowd. That's for sure. Um, the amount of performance or the amount of things you had to do there's even little things about connecting with the crowd that i've learned through time you know if we look at certain things such as a couple of reactions i've got when i've been on stage before a lot of that doesn't just happen there's certain things you have to do to make that happen certain eye contact certain levels of things yeah. and brett hart was one who was a guest trainer at the fwa academy when it was there and some of the things that he talks about it's just so clever yeah. In terms of how to interact with a live audience and how to chat to that. The other thing I think it gave me was that no fear of sort of rejection of who you are. It's this is me. And if you like it, you'll come to me. If you don't, you won't. And that was, I mean, especially when you look at where I started Edgar TV from, it was one of those things which was like, who is this guy? You know, and it's like, well, this is me like it or support someone else sort of thing mm. and through time i think that that my personality has got over and people understand me a little bit more with things especially the ones that watch the channel they'll understand that i make a lot of like tongue-in-cheek comments for I, i'll present them quite you know like the the interview at the world championships that i did when i'm like oh yeah i must be favorite against mensa you know and you know just little silly throwaway comments like that that people just sort of when they get to know you a little bit they're just it's almost like oh yeah brilliant he's just been matt again sort of thing you know yeah. but there's some that didn't get it but then the other side of that is 
the, the other thing that wrestling taught me was whatever reaction you're getting, whether someone's cheering you or someone's booing you, if you're getting a reaction, you're doing your job. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, darts is a form of entertainment. Yes, I'm up there to try and go up the rankings and trying to win matches and trying to win stuff. But on the same aspect, it's a form of entertainment. And whether someone wants me to win or they want me to lose, as long as they want something to happen in my match, whether they want me to go out first round or they want me to win the title, if they care about my outcome, I've done my job as an entertainer. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I mean, and I've really like I said earlier on, I mean, I, I used I used to do a lot of acting. I still like, you know, still would enjoy doing acting, but having as much time with this uh, recent job. But you know, you knock on so many doors and you get rejected, rejected, rejected. You know, it's like one in a hundred will open, and yeah. you know, that's given me sort of the capability to be quite strong and go like, all right, I accept rejection and I'm quite happy to move on. In the same way that some people are going to like me, some people won't like me. I think yeah. once you accept that, you know, you're not going to please everyone. You just have to move on, enjoy what you're doing, and I think that's what we see from from yourself, Buck Rogers, Feeder. For me, yeah. it feels very American Pie. This is uh, Matt's walk on, by the way, that sort of childish, naughty mischief. I love it. How did you pick it? Right. Um, so until then, I had quite bassy sort of tunes. And I Dirk knew Van, that wasn't... You were Dirk Van Dyvenboda then, yeah? <laughs> no, it was uh, louder, oh, DJ louder. Fresh. Okay, right. Great song, but I didn't really think that it suited me. And I thought I need something a little bit more me. And then, like a lot of stories, you know. Uh, so I was out one night, you know. I was having a, having a couple of um, couple of shandies, and we went to a karaoke bar. And when we walked in, someone was singing "Feed the Book Rogers," and the whole place was absolutely banging. And we went in. We didn't go to the bar. We went straight in, like player, player, you know, jumping around. And, uh, and then when we went to the thing, I was like. Oh, I hope someone sings that again. And then I was like, this is perfect. Yeah. This is perfect, you know, for a, for a tune. Yeah. So then when I woke up the next morning, I remembered it and I thought, right, let's have another listen to that. And I was picturing it and I'm like, that could work. Could work. Because I'm not one of these that like, I don't like some of these um, karaoke tunes like proper karaoke songs, you know, that uh, some people walk out to because it doesn't fit the personality or it's a little bit too slow yeah, yeah, and yeah. a little bit too forced, you know, sing this song, you know, and I'll just walk onto the stage while you do it. And, you know, with, with that song, it, it's got everything that, you know, I think it's a perfect walk on song. It's, I would do when I it's, picked it. <laughs> it's good fun, good choice. I think it works well with uh, with your character. And uh, no, I'm I'm a fan. Swinging back into darts, I mean, you love big checkouts, and I I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true that you had quite a big one against Gary Anderson. You, but you like to yeah. talk about it. I mean, this is this might be confidential. Let me know if it's you know if if I shouldn't be saying this. Not many people know, so I thought we should share. Yeah, it, it was one of those things that sort of happened at the Summer Series to win the match. 170 finish for the match with him sat on the double. And I thought, I'm going to keep this quiet. Hopefully no one's noticed because, you know, big fan of Gary Anderson, one of the best players that's ever lived. I thought, I don't want to keep bringing that up. But unfortunately, it seems that it follows me around a little bit, which it would do. You know, what an amazing achievement to beat Gary Anderson with 170 finish. So I like to try and play it down where possible. But it seems everywhere I go, someone just wants to go, oh, by the way, was that you that did that? And I go, don't, don't pass it on, you know, but. You're yeah. so humble. I just, uh, I, I'm in awe. I feel like bowing down. I mean, I've never seen you mention it. Like, you know, some people might mention it daily. You know, they might tweet about it regularly. Might you know, if someone ta if someone says I've just done a one seventy checkout, you know, it's not like you reply back saying, "Yeah, but did you do it against Gary Anderson?" You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's what I like. It's just humble from you all the time. When it happened, and I was banging on about it every single day, and people went, "Oh, this joke stretched as far as it can now," and I'm like, "It hasn't. It's got to stretch to breaking point, and then once it's broken." go again because yeah, that's yeah. when it then once it's broken that's when it becomes funny yeah. and now it's to the point where as soon as anyone does a 170 like oh you know because 
I, I pushed it so far beyond breaking point where people was actually would accept it as being an achievement to so far beyond it to being a joke. Mm. And now it's it's got its place. You know, I, the only thing I need now is a T-shirt saying I beat Gary Anderson with a 170 finish. Right, and guys, let, let's let's make this happen. Dark Wolf, if you're listening, that's that's going to be <laughs> Bella, right? Yeah, I, I do have a PO box. You can find it on my channel. I beat Gary Anderson with a 170 T-shirt. I'd love to wear that on stream. <laughs> I don't know if you know, um, there's a comedian called Ross Noble and his comedy is very much tells a joke and just pushes it so far that the audience is like, it's getting a bit far now, but he goes so far then that it just, they can't help themselves, but find it funny again. He was doing like, he was, he was doing a fake making an ice cream, you know, he's sort of like doing all the motions and everything. He's like, well, we're going for a double header here and everything, but he goes so far with his comedy. It's funny again, check him out. I think you'd like him. It's right up your street. Yeah. Yeah. I like that sort of humor. 